so much is happening in our environment affecting children and most so preteens and teens psychologically. In return, they either want to embrace these changes or rebel against. In the process of dissonance comes stress or what we call pressure. How do preteens or teens deal with social, financial, school or growth pressure in their day-to-day -day life? In this show, I'm going to have an elaborate discussion on stress with the end goal being how preteens and teens can manage this. This might just be the place of information you needed to spring out of your depression of this or this is what your friend, a family member or a colleague needs to get up, dust himself or herself and start again. So do not fail to share, subscribe and put your comments down under the comment section. Welcome to today's training session. My name is Otieno Mjomba and I'm a motivational speaker, I'm a teacher and uh, I'm also a media and PR practitioner. So to start us off, I'll start by posing a question. Which one best represents you? You can send a chat on the message uh, under the message section just uh, to tell us and that is after watching these videos. So the first video, the second video, the third video and the fourth video. A, B, C, and D. The first video, look at the reaction. Here we are keen about the reactions. Which one really represents you best? There's the one that um, the, the lady in A is holding her face. Lady in B, look at it again. What is the reaction? Then we go to C. And then D, when you're stressed up, which is the right or which is the position that you like taking? Okay, important for you to tell us. We really like to know. So it's important to know that uh, stress is no more thing for a human being. What happens in your body is that adrenaline is pumped through your arteries and your heart goes faster, your pulse goes up, and your blood pressure goes up. You can feel your head pounding. You can feel flushed or sweaty. You can feel that your vision is not quite right. You can also feel a bit sick in the stomach. You can have a very worrying feeling in your mind. So with this, we need to understand that uh, uh, we have statistics about stress. And stress among students is quite common. According to the Anxiety and uh, Depression Association of America, 41.6% of co uh, college students report that they experience anxiety or stress related to their studies. 85 of students state that they feel overwhelmed by the number of tasks that they have to complete during the study year. This means that the stress issue is common and is an, uh, an elephant that we need to slay. So before knowing or understanding much about it, we need to know about categories of stress. And uh, we understand that we have good stress and bad stress. Good stress is known as eustress, which results in healthy performance and competition, while the bad stress is distress and could cause negative effect on our daily life and mental health if not addressed on time. Uh, with the understanding of uh, eustress and distress takes us to types of stress. What are the types of stress that we know. So to start us off, we will have acute stress. Acute stress results from your body's reaction to a new or challenging situation. It is that feeling you get from an approaching deadline or when you are narrowly avoid being hit by a car. We can even experience this as a result of uh, something we enjoy. 
like an exhilarating ride on a roller coaster or an outstanding personal achievement you've scored great marks in an examination and so that feeling that comes with it or the moment before the release of uh, the examination results acute stress is classified as short term usually emotions and the body returns to their normal state relatively soon after acute state we go to episodic acute stress episodic acute stress is when acute stresses happens frequently this can be because of a repeated tight work deadlines it can also be because of the frequent high stress situation experienced with this type of stress we don't get time to return to a relaxed and calm state and the effects of the high frequency acute stresses accumulate it often leaves us feeling like we are moving from one crisis to another now after understanding this we go now to the third type of stress that is called chronic stress chronic stress is the result of stressors that continue for a long period of time Example include living in a high crime neighborhood to constantly fighting with your parents. This type of stress feels never ending. We often have difficulty seeing any way to improve or change the situation that is the cause of our chronic stress. After understanding this type of stress, then now we go to the signs of stresses. What do you need to uh, look out for? If you know a friend or that uh, you are going through a difficult time, you can be on the lookout or for the changes in behavior or things that might signal that they or you are experiencing excessive stress. And so these are the signs. For example, if you can't sleep or you are getting to bed later than usual, um if you seem fatigued disengaged panicky or down or if you are saying you are tired all the time or have headache or stomach ache or if you are feeling irritable about yourself or others around you or if you are having trouble concentrating then you need to start worrying this might be signs of stress it can be that uh, you are trying to avoid school or you are not yourself it, it can also be that you're not eating very well or you are staying in your room a lot of the a, a lot a, a lot on the weekends when usually you will be out with your friends so when this when you start seeing this you as a parent or as a teen or a teenager preteen and a caregiver then you na you need to be very keen you need to start thinking of uh, is this person stressed up or not so with this we now need to understand what stresses teens if you are a caregiver you are a parent or you are a teen or preteen what stresses you before going into um discussion about what stresses teens you are free to share your comments about what you feel might be stressing you what are the causes or what might be the reasons or things that might be stressing you share your comments down and then we'll be so glad because um these are just samples of uh, the things that affect most of the teens but according to you you might be unique stresses are different in nature so what might be stressing you feel free to share so the first one about um the pressure what might be a stressing teens is mental illness and uh, growing up we experience new external and internal struggles that can be emotionally overwhelming one in five youths meet the criteria for a severe mental health disorder and 11% of teen teens report suffering at least one major depressive episode in their past year it is important to note that all of us are subject to low moods and experience worry 
But these emotional states can lead to chronic stress without the right emotional regulation skills. In turn, this can develop into anxiety and depression. So you need to be keen about the mental illness because by the end of it all, it can lead to anxiety and depression. And when it gets to that point, it is a point of no reverse. The second uh, issue that uh, stresses teens is peer pressure. All people naturally want to fit in and be liked by, uh, liked by others, but adolescents feel this pressure intensely. Negative peer pressure includes pressure to use alcohol and drugs, participate in sexual acts, or engage in risky behaviors. But uh, even less extreme examples like pressure to dress a certain way can create drastic changes in teens' thought and behaviors, leading to low self-esteem or even depression. So peer pressure can result to depression or even a loss of self-esteem. So you need to be very keen about it, and we are going to explain this much when we talk about uh, technology, how technology influences peer pressure. Now, the third pre um, issue that affects teens, and um, when you talk about the stre uh, what stresses teens, we want to talk about pressure to succeed academically. I know here we have uh, just, we have candidates, um, we have students that are just from doing their KCPE, and uh, I've received their results. And we also have uh, candidates, the Form 4s, that are just done with their cases and waiting, are waiting for results. The results might be out next week. So pressure to succeed, uh, succeed academically. How is this? The stress and anxiety of academics can be challenging to youth to effectively manage. Teens may worry that a less than an ideal academic performance will lead to being judged by their peers, scolded by their parents, or rejected by universities. Even high-performing students feel the stress from comp uh, competition or pressure to get into the best schools. In particular, when students aren't taught to productively cope with failure, they can become demotivated and fall short of their potential. So academic pressure, as much as it might be good, if not well managed and if we don't learn on how to cope uh, and, or how to uh, productively cope with failure, then this becomes a challenge. And it is true that most people don't understand how to productively cope with failure. Failure is supposed to be part of uh, the lessons. Pick lessons from why you failed. So what might not have worked at that particular time? So this is where now you look at uh, what really worked, what did not work, and what do you need to improve in all this. With that, you'll be in a position to succeed and you won't let um, the, that pressure to escalate. The next um, challenge to uh, the teens we are talking about uncertainty about the future. Today's teens often feel lost and have a scrambled sense of direction. This sometimes end up creating an identity crisis or a loss of ambition. Being a teenager is essentially an in-between stage of being a child and an adult. Though are becoming independent and making your own decisions. Society tells you that you are too young to know what is right. There is also the fear that we have that comes with it. The fear of making the wrong decisions, particularly when it comes to choosing what to study, more so in colleges and universities for our friends that are waiting for their KCSE results. There is also uncertainty that can also come as a result of your parents losing a job 
or the death of a family member. The pressure to know what comes next in life or even pressure as a result of changing houses or schools. All this created discomfort in our minds and in the process if we were not in a position to deal with these discomforts, then stress comes in. The next um, cause of this is bullying and this is the elephant in the room. Most of us here have either gone through this or undergoing through the same. It doesn't matter in which class you are in. Remember, bullying is illegal. And if it can be proved that you indeed bullied someone, then chances are that you can be expelled from an institution. Bullying happens between someone who has more power and is more aggressive than the targeted person. A bully uses that power, whether it is physical or physical strength, being more popular or knowing embarrassing information to hurt or control the person they are bullying. Some of the most common forms of bullying include we have physical bullying, and this is like um, hitting or striking someone, kicking someone, or shoving someone, intentionally tripping someone, causing them to fall, especially if they are carrying several items, spitting on someone. The, the, the other form of bullying is uh, verbal bullying. And verbal bullying, this one involves teasing, threats of physical harm, Name calling, which can include racist, homophobic, or other offensive languages. And the other form might be bullying uh, based on um, impacting relationship with the re recipient. Here, it can be starting rumors about someone. You've heard about rumor mongers. Oh, nani nani did this. It can be intentionally excluding someone from an activity. It can be giving the silent treatment. It can also be gossiping. So when all this happens in our environment, then you need to know how to deal with them. We will discuss much about bullying in our next uh, episode. But for now, understand that bullying can be a source of uh, stress to teen or preteen if not managed. The next one, and this is the elephant in the house, this is the parental pressure. Even when parents have good intentions, the pressure they put on us to constantly perform well in every aspect of our lives can be damaging to us. Parents who cannot distinguish between healthy encouragement and unhealthy criticism can unknowingly inflict a lifetime of self-worth problems on their children. So parents need to be very keen in uh, how they exert the pressure. We need to understand and we need to create a balance between uh, a healthy encouragement and an, uh, a healthy criticism and not unhealthy criticism. Uh, did you know that Lack of sleep can also be a cause of uh, stress. I know, maybe you knew or you don't. Lack of sleep can cause the body to react as if it is in distress, releasing more of the stress hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is uh, responsible for your fight or flight reaction to danger increasing your heart rate in anticipation of a fight. Too much cortisol, however, can lead to weight gain and uh, cardiovascular issues over time. This often occurs when poor sleeping habit prevents the body from regulating its hormone levels overnight. So lack of sleep can also lead to stress. How interesting is that? Now, there is this elephant in the room that is technology. 
And it is true, everyone here, even the platform we are using is the result of the good deeds of technology. Resa a researcher has shown that uh, despite its connected nature, social media increases feelings of isolation and depression, especially among teens. Seeing popularity quantified in likes and shares can create feelings of jealousy, insecurity, and FOMO, fear of missing out. Cyberbullying is a serious problem. With technology also comes exposure to content that may not be appropriate, such as hate speech. Moreover, when teens spend so much time online, they risk not developing authentic relationships that are vital to social development. For some, these virtual platforms can boost social support and connectedness, but at a younger age, it can be difficult to step back and recognize that most things posted to social media are only the highlights of others' lives and don't include everything that happens behind the scenes. We see many of our peers and influencers having seemingly perfect lives, perfect parties, perfect attires, and perfect grades. So, not only are we trying to keep up with the demands of school, extracurricular activities, work, their future, our future, and our in-person social lives, we may also be trying to keep up with our sense of identity, sense of self-worth, and sense of uh, belonging. It certainly can add to the worry and feelings of insecurity as we figure out who we are. But the d data also shows rates of depression and suicidal behavior among teens have risen over the past two decades, and these rising rates have coincided with the advent of social media. Social media use is associated with mental health issues in the, this age group and that young adults turn to social media to help cope with stress even though it doesn't help them manage it. So the social media platforms that we are using can be also a perfect case of what is causing us to be stressed up. So after understanding what makes us uh, get stressed up, it is important now to go to how to manage these stresses. But before that, remember, you can share your comments on a point that maybe I have uh, skipped or I have not elaborated that much under uh, what might be causing us to have the stresses. This now takes us to stress management activities for teens. And here we want to learn about how do we manage now all these factors that we've mentioned. And um, to start us off is um, the fact that we need to get enough sleep. Some teenagers have so many demands on their time and energy that they don't even have room in their schedule for sleep. Sleep deprivation increases your chances of poor grades, anxiety, depression, concentration problems, and even suicidal thoughts. So if you're not sleeping enough, then you're doing a lot of damage to your body. Have enough sleep to avoid having uh, poor grades, to avoid having depression, to avoid having anxiety, and uh, to make sure that you can concentrate in class, get enough sleep. You also, in addition to getting enough sleep, you need to get uh, regular exercise. Exercise is one of the best ways uh, to achieve natural stress relief. Strength training and inter uh, interval training will keep your heart rate high, helping to release all the stored tension in the body to promote post-workout relaxation. This practice puts the participants in tune with their body, helping them to get their thoughts and breathing under control and alleviating excess muscle tension through stretching and meditation. So any moment that you feel that uh, you are stressed up, 
just get into those sport shoes that you have change and have a walk or go and exercise play soccer play basketball play any game go for yoga go for meditation you've heard of people going to karura forest just to relax you've heard of people going to ngong forest on ngong hills just to climb the hills it is all about regular exercise as a way of uh, managing stress so just do so if you're in class then you need to understand you need to get out go out there practice do everything the way you want to do if you are in class again and it is break time and maybe you've gone through the pressure about academics just get out of that class go out when it is games or break go play it will really do a lot of justice to your body in addition to the same you need to take time to practice breathing techniques and uh, here we are talking about guided breathing and guided breathing and meditation techniques can help to slow your breath and alleviate stress in just few minutes by lowering the heart rate and delivering more oxygen to the brain supplement these breathing exercises with the relaxing music for stress relief here for the yoga friends this particular point is almost similar to the earlier point of exercising regularly so depending on how you want to do it when you're stressed you are told when you get on stage for example you have the stage fright have a breathe in and out so deep breathing in and out within that moment there will be a lot that will happen to your body because in the process you'll be delivering more oxygen to the brain and that will relax your body you also need to um eat a healthy balanced diet how often do we do this it is um a common sense that uh, teens are notorious for having poor eating habits you know yourself mm -hmm. you might be skipping meals or opting for sugary foods of no nutritional value understand that these food choices can lead to poor concentration it can also lead to fatigue mood swings anxiety and many more teenagers in particular need nutrient dense foods to support their changing bodies fluctuating hormones and developing brains do what you can do to begin and end the day with a well rounded meal and so i don't know if this has ever happened to you more so when you are under pressure most of the time when we are under pressure when you are stressed we try to skip meals and tend to sleep a lot yes we've talked about sleeping as a um one way of uh, controlling or managing stress but again you need to understand that uh, it is one of the indicators to tell whether someone is stressed or not so when you're skipping the meal when you're not eating remember your body um the, the hormonal imbalance in your body and by the fact that your body is changing needs a lot of this energy and this energy comes from food so make sure that whenever you are stressed eat a balanced diet there is a common uh, joke that uh, regardless of how stressed you are always eat I don't know if that applies with you but in real sense it is one way of managing stress and here not just eating any meal is a balanced diet inclusive of water and fruits roughages food that is rich in uh, protein carbohydrates and vitamin having a balanced diet will be just a good way of making yourself happy Another way of um, managing stress is practice positive affirmations. And this is so so uh, intense 
of mostly for teens. Remember we talked about self-identity and sense of belonging when dealing with technology? Now, when you're talking about uh, positive affirmation, most of the time, depending on our personalities, we tend to believe what other people say about us and not what we feel is the right thing. You might seem happy and self-assured on the outside, yet be struggling with heavy self-doubts on the inside that are causing stress. So if bullies come to you and they start talking about um, either, either remember the different forms of bullying, in one way or another, you find them talking about or spreading rumors about you. To you, you might feel like this is the truth. Remember that positive affirmations can help counter counteract those negative thoughts and feelings you have. These are essentially saying you can repeat to yourself to assure you. And you see, um, the, 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 the more positive mindset you have, the more confident you will become. So, what are the things that uh, you need to talk about? How do you positively affirm yourself? Example of positive affirmation sounds like I am. For example, I am loved by my parents or my teachers or my friends, my brothers or my sisters. I am smart and capable of succeeding in all of my classes. I am okay to feel scared. I don't always have to be strong. This doesn't mean I am weak. I am empowered to change my life for better. I believe in myself. I always have my personal mantra for those people that we've interacted with for so long that goes like this. Believe and become. When you believe, you are affirming yourself. That is a positive affirmation. You have the confidence in you. And when you're confident enough, even the things that people don't believe in, they might just find them believing in them because of your impact. So practice positive affirmation. Talk about I. So when you feel like you're under pressure, uh, pressure, and uh, under a lot of um, challenges, yeah, pressure and pressure. Think about it and ask yourself, is it? Can I do it? So you are getting on stage and you want to talk to people. And you feel like uh, the whole world is crumbling. What do you do? Breathe in. Remember the act of breathing in? And then affirm yourself, I can do this and get on stage and do it. There is um, a good series that later I'll let you know that you need to follow to look at all this that we're dealing with about the challenges, the waters, the stressors, and how we can manage this. The movie is called Go. You can go to Netflix and find, check, watch, look at all the characters and you will see those that are battling with the issue of uh, um, lack of confidence, uh, sense of belonging, and uh, how technology is affecting so much. And by the end of it all, stress, how they are managing. The next uh, way of managing stress is uh, staying organized. We need to be organized. And nothing creates feeling of stress faster than disorganized backpack, bedroom, or even a desk. If you do not have inherent organizational skills, it is time to start now. The organization is an easy means of stress management for teenagers. And um, first and foremost, have a planner to help you remember due dates and where school supplies can be easily located. Consider organizing papers into different folders for your backpack or a filing cabinet at home where notes, exam papers, and more can be easily retrieved. 
This will go a long way towards feeling more positive about homework with much less stress. You've seen, you've gotten to a point where you have, uh, you want to revise. But you take around 30 minutes trying to look for the papers and uh, the books that you need to use. So, have a planner that will uh, reduce the amount of stress that you go through. But if you can't find everything that you're looking for, for almost 10 minutes, 15 minutes, chances are that a lot will be happening to you. So um, there are also other ways to manage stress. And here I've highlighted six of them, or even nine of them, depending on how you feel. One also is to avoid excess caffeine, which might increase feeling of anxiety and agitation. Yes, coffee is good. At times it makes you know, you understand all about science about coffee. But um, not too much of it might also make us be anxious and agitated. So avoid excess caffeine, which can increase feelings of anxiety and agitation. And more so, this, avoid it when you are going to sleep. Avoid it when you are going to sleep, when you need good night sleep. So the latest that you can take coffee can be around 4 p.m. The latest that you can take coffee can be around 4 p.m. Any other time will interfere with your clock, your mental clock. And that might be a cause of that because we understand lack of sleep will come also in. Also avoid illegal drugs, alcohol and tobacco. You see, the stimulants that we are getting might uh, also uh, bring the feeling of anxiety and agitation. And too much of uh, the same, any drug, any drug, remember, um, the of the counter of the counter drugs uh, if not well managed or used then they can also be as a, uh, can also cause another problem to our health and um these other illegal drugs also have a negative consequences but you see we feel like uh, this is uh, the new norm that if you are a teen and you've not taken any drug, or if you're a teen and you've not smoked, then that is not cool. If you're a teen and you've not taken alcohol, that is not cool. That is nonsense. You don't need to be a cool kid, cool teen, by taking illegal drugs. In fact, what you are doing to your body is that uh, you are introducing... Um, you're introducing uh, tox uh, toxic substances in your body as early as uh, 12 to 19. And in the process, it means that uh, you are going to work on uh, uh, lifestyle diseases at an early age. Remember the liver cirrhosis? Remember different types or different sorts of cancer diseases? Yeah, some of uh, we have uh, cancer that are related to some of the drugs. Others are might not be related to these drugs. So if you are involving yourself in illegal drugs or taking illegal drugs, then you might just be looking for a ticket, early ticket to your grave. So avoid illegal drugs and uh, cool kids. Do not take drugs. You might also, uh, just uh, on the point of drugs, understand that most of the people that find themselves taking drugs, these are people that are stressed up, they are depressed. So we, might, we must control all the other um, stressors to make sure that we don't end up taking these drugs. We don't end up trying to look for um, affirmation from outside. If you're getting on stage, rehearsal is uh, very important. If you are going to talk to anybody or any crowd, any group, you need to rehearse. If you are going to sing or dance, if you are going to perform, rehearsal is important. Don't just get out without any work plan and then you want to 
do magics. Chances are that you might be just doing a big mistake or injustice to yourself. Rehearse and practice situations which cause stress. And one example is taking a speech class. If, take, if uh, you're going to talk in front of a class, and if generally talking in front of a class makes you anxious, you've heard of people standing uh, before the mirror just to uh, perform. It is important. Look at the person that you are. Correct the mistakes. And then when you get on stage, you'll be feeling much easier than, be, uh, than, than, than you expect. Also decrease negative self-talk and avoid even these people. The negative self-talkers, the negative talkers. Challenge negative thoughts with alternative, neutral or positive thoughts. My life will never get better. Those are, that is a negative statement and it can be transformed into I may feel hopeless now but my life will probably get better if I work hard or if I work at it and get some help. You see, that is a positive statement and it means that you are working towards finding a solution. But oh, I can't do it. I can't perform well. I, I, I've never performed well in this subject. My family will never do this to me. Or oh, my mommy will never buy for me this. Or oh, my daddy will never do this to me. That is a negative statement and negative talks that will weigh, you, weigh on you. And by the end of it all, you will feel like everything is not moving. And that will be a way of uh, causing stress to yourself. You also need to take a break from uh, stressful situations. I told you up there that um, don't even engage with the people that are constantly having negative talks. So if by being with these people, you are going to increase your stress levels, then avoid them. Take a break from them. So how do you do this? Activities like listening to music, talking to a, a friend, drawing, writing, or spending time with a pet can reduce stress. You see now, those extracurricular activities that you like doing, get involved, do this, work on your journal, work on your writing skills, work on your speaking skills, work on any skill that you need to, work, to, to, to develop. You might just find that... Um, by getting out of uh, the stressful situation, you are building on your portfolio. And by the end, we, before even you know, you will be doing better. Then you also need to build a network of friends who can help you cope positively. This is still related to number four and number five. Building a network of friends who can help you cope positively. And so locate people that are positive. Locate people that are going to assure you. Locate people that are confident. People that believe in you. Don't go for bullies. Don't go for people that are looking down upon you. Go for the people that believe in you. This will help in uh, reducing the amount of stress. And that is, that is why the assurance from the parents from our friends, whenever you find yourself at a stressing situation, always melts the stress away. So build a network of friends who can help you cope positively. Um, we have come to the end of this session on teens versus pressure and stress. Tell us about the program and the lessons learned. You can... Um, you are also free to propose topics that we should be engaging you on to create an interactive forum. So do not fear to share your thoughts and your views. We are all here to learn together. Share also your comments on the comment section. That will be of great help to us. And um, just to wrap it up, you need to understand that if you suspect you or someone is stressed, Try to determine or talk to them to find out 
if something is going on. If you can identify why you are feeling stressed, it will be easier to address the cause and manage the stress appropriately. Seek support if necessary. Stress on you can be harmful to your health and well-being if it seems as though you have been enduring for a long time. And as um, one of the greatest uh, uh, writers, uh, Fred Rogers, in his article, World According to Mr. Rogers, says, and in his book, Important Things to Remember, he says that in times of stress, the best thing we can do for each other is to listen with our ears and our hearts and to be assured that our questions are just as important as our answers. I wish you a stress and pressure-free moment. Pressure-free moment.